In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to become an appointment setter in 2024. There's a lot of videos out there that aren't really outlining the journey very clearly. So in this video, we're going to go ahead and take care of that. And without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right in. So who am I and why should you even listen to me? I don't want you guys thinking that you're listening to somebody who's just making stuff up. So a little bit about me. I was a remote DM setter for the fastest growing online coaching business for about two years. I have set and booked upwards of $1.2 million in sales. I've had countless amounts of conversations inside of the DMs, multiple five figures just by twiddling my thumbs. Uh, I've coached over 100 plus business owners on their exact setting process. Um, and I started a community in December of 2023 with the intent of creating the best appointment setters in the game. Okay, and uh, here are a couple of screenshots just to attest to that. Uh, you can see on the bottom left corner here, uh, Jeremy Pogue, he was actually the one who I helped scale to 220000 a month, uh, being the only employee on the team, which was pretty insane. Uh, a couple of other people on here, Nick Priola, I plugged in his appointment setter. Uh, he did like 33K in 13 days. Calvin uh, did 7K in 45 days as an appointment setter. Funny enough, he actually wrapped up his first month doing five figures as an appointment setter. And I believe it was 12K, so super proud of him. Uh, Keegan, we placed him in a row in just 10 days. Uh, here's a little bit of a presentation that some of the coaches were giving. And, you know, they gave me a little bit of a shout out because I plugged in their setter. And so they're going crazy. And uh, yeah, you can pause the video if you want to see a little bit more of these. But we know what we're doing around here. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive right in. First of all, I need you guys who are watching this video to get inside of the right mindset. Okay, this is not a get rich quick scheme. I don't want you to think that you're going to make 10K a month next week because that is not how it works. You're taking the smarter and more guaranteed approach here by learning a skill, getting on a team, helping them so you can make money in return and also learn a really good skill so you can see behind the curtains as to you know what really goes behind running an actual business. Okay. You're about to learn a real skill and provide actual value to the marketplace. And this can take some time. Okay, I'll be honest, you guys, it's a slow burn and it can be. But those who become remote appointment setters and actually make it are the ones who are willing to go through the trenches. So suck it up and deal with it. Okay? This will be the difference between whether you land the rule or not. And I don't think that people understand the importance of just this last line here. Uh, really soak it up. Pause it if you have to. Really think about what I'm saying here. This will be the difference, okay? So who can we help? Who are we even looking to help as an appointment setter or at least an aspiring appointment setter? We're looking to help online business owners. And I personally prefer working with online coaches because the inbound opportunity is insane. There's a lot of personal branding attached and it's very easy to sell people online as long as you have a really good personal brand and you have trust built with people. And so that's primarily the reason why I prefer working with online coaches and uh, it's pretty much where my expertise lies as well. So they should be pretty easy to find online as well. Like I mentioned, a personal brand, very clean profile to the point. You should be able to tell what they do within the first line of their bio, you can say, right? And so they have good content, handful of client results. And again, it's obvious they're doing pretty well, right? They have multiple client results, meaning they've worked with people in the past and a decent following. So they have a minimum of at least 4,000 followers. So they're growing steadily and uh, yeah, they don't have to be the super big influencer for you to help them make a ton of money because chances are they already are making good enough money for us to go in there and compliment their business. OK, who should we stay away from? So we should stay away from people who have a terrible personal brand. And I mean, I don't even think I have to give you an examples for this, but, you know, they don't have a good brand at all. They have no client results. They look new to the online business space. They're inconsistent, 100 followers. You get the point, right? You can very easily determine somebody who is a very good content creator slash coach versus somebody who's not, okay? And here are a couple of good examples of people that you would preferably go after, right? Uh, this I just found these random accounts here, but 32,000 followers, that's still on the higher end. But then you have one in the middle, that's 16,000 followers. And then you have another one that's a little bit lower, 10,000 followers. And if we kind of break everything down there, you can see in the first slide here, the testimonials, uh, there's a story highlight of, you know, a bunch of clients that, you know, he's helped. So it's very clear and easy to determine that he's actually helped transformed people's lives, right? You can see his bio is very clear as well. It says we've helped over 325 busy professionals lose weight and gain confidence without diet restrictions. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Uh, online men's transformation coach. 
Let's see, uh, he has client results, a story tab there. The content is very clear uh, to the point and you can see it's getting good engagement. The same thing for the third one here, helping online coaches scale. Uh, that's a pretty common one, right? Daily wins. But all of these I'm pretty sure are plastered with client results. So if you go in there and see for yourself, more than likely going to be client results of you know people just winning on the daily. Right? And you can see he has very good clean content as well. So just good indicator, he's more than likely doing well. Now, where can we find them? So you can find them anywhere online, but these are the primary ones that I personally like sticking to, meaning Instagram, Twitter, and school even, okay? I would preferably just say right off the bat here, you might want to stay away from Facebook groups because up until this point, it's just a way to get people to buy into a course. And uh, then, yeah, it just has such a bad reputation now. I would preferably just stay away from there. I don't think you can find any good opportunities there anymore. And if you've been looking for a role, you can probably attest to me saying that, okay? And we have to get a little bit creative here, but we also have to just use our boundaries within how to actually navigate through each platform, right? So on Instagram, you can probably use hashtags that coaches would probably use right coaches at least that are searching for their prospects that they're trying to get exposed in front of their audience so it could be sales coach it could be hashtag sales hashtag healthy hashtag um, losing weight something like that right twitter you can use the search engine i'm sure you could just type in online coach there and uh, you can also swift through a suggested accounts there right and ultimately again like i mentioned it just comes down to just learning how to use the platform and then once you actually learn the platform it's pretty straightforward on how to go about finding different types of people and school is really cool because you can actually use their names to just find someone on instagram so chances are if somebody has a school group or community uh, it's more of like a back end type of offer. So they're probably making on money on the front end or the other way around, right? So you can probably just find somebody's name on school, find the owner of the group, just search for their name on Instagram or Twitter. And that can be a really fun and easy way to actually get in contact with them. I don't have a fourth option here, but you know, another creative one is an email. So if you go on people's YouTube channel, um, you can go to their about, more than likely their email is going to be connected there. So you can get creative with your approach. But like I mentioned, just be creative here, okay? And how do we actually get in contact with them? So we're going to be sending video messages to all of them, okay? And a hint here is I want you guys to be personal, okay? You do want to keep things simple, but you don't want to be like everyone else, okay? I was inside of a coach's business account. Right, I was booking in calls. I was, you know, obviously doing what it is that I have to do as an appointment setter. And I saw what came in the request and people were sending the exact same messages. It wasn't even funny, right? Particularly like for appointment setting. And another one was for like copywriting, right? Or just email marketing. And people would say the same thing. They would say, hey man, love the content. I think what you're doing is awesome. You doing anything with email, by the way? Like it's, I don't, I don't even, I can't even imagine that working, okay? So I would preferably push you to send video messages because it's super personal and people love to put a name to the face, okay? And I'll show you a little bit of a trick that you can do here, but volume is going to be your best friend here. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, you want to bite the bullet and just go through with it, okay? Start off slow and get consistent because the first day I want you to commit to 10, 10 video DMs sent, or if you need to go at five, whatever, something you're comfortable with because ultimately getting in front of the camera is going to be uncomfortable if you're new to it, right? And then the next day do 20 and then keep ramping up that number as you go on and it's going to get easier and easier, but this is the work that has to get done. Now, what do we even say? I filmed a quick video here and to be honest, I did it in like three minutes because there's not too much that goes into it. You do want to say and follow a little bit of a, a certain framework and make sure you mention, you know, you're looking for an appointment setting gig. You want to help book and qualified leads and so on and so forth, but go ahead and uh, we're going to watch it for ourselves. Hey Serge, how's it going? Just uh, checking out the YouTube channel. I wanted to say, I think the content that you're pushing out is awesome. Listen, I don't want to waste too much of your time. I am an appointment setter and I was wondering if you did have room on your sales team for me to go in there and start booking qualified sales calls for you immediately. So I've invested well over four figures into my own skill development and I'm confident if I'm in there, I'm going to pack out the calendar. So let me know if that interests you and uh, yeah, I would love to chat about it. Cheers. Awesome. So I have a couple of notes here that I want to make sure I just point out. Just some principles that you guys can follow, but you want to have their page open in the background. It shows genuine interest and it'll help if you're actually subscribed and yeah, you can prove that or whatever. They're going to love it. Okay. If they see their face, they're going to love it. I've had this happen to me before and it was really good. It was a really good approach. It caught my attention off the bat. 
you want to speak clearly and confidently, right? Don't be like super hunched over or like in a corner, right? I'm like standing straight up. I'm speaking with confidence, etc. right? Dress casual, be presentable. You don't want to film this video with a hoodie over your head, okay? Uh, these are, again, some basic principles to follow. You obviously do want to mention you're looking for a gig. If you've never invested with, you know, into yourself and, and you can't use that four-figure line, completely fine. You can probably just throw in something else there in terms of the research that you've done. Uh, even the research towards, you know, their content, their offer, their, you know, podcasts, whatever it is that you can do, people love hearing about themselves and love hearing that you've actually shown genuine interest. Not just saying, you know, you're doing you doing anything with email right now, right? We all know that line. And if you're afraid of being on camera, guys, I wanna make sure every single person hears this because I do get a lot of messages asking, can I be an appointment setter without ever showing my face? It's just a weird question to ask, okay? But I wanna be as straight up as possible here. Get over it, okay? No one else is going to be coming to save you. You are the only one who can do your saving, right? You are responsible for the situation that you're in right now. So if you have to get uncomfortable and you have to film a video a couple of hours a day, just get over it, okay? Nobody cares. Nobody cares if you're scared, whatever. You don't even care if you're scared, right? You ultimately care about making money. And that's what's stopping you from making money. And I want to make sure I make that very, very clear to anybody watching. You can do appointment setting. It's super easy. Anybody can get into it. But are you willing to get at least a little uncomfortable? You will see later on in your entrepreneurial journey, you're going to have to get way more uncomfortable than just sending a video DM. All right. But it starts off small. So luckily, you don't have to do anything outlandish or anything. So make sure this sticks with you. Do the uncomfortable tasks that are going to move the needle forward for you. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and move on. Why do we want to get on a call with them? Okay, we want to obviously show our interest in working alongside them, but we also need to vet them. Okay, there needs to be opportunity for us to make money as well. There are a lot of coaches who have really good branding, maybe a few client results, but they aren't making enough money like we need them to be making for us to also be making money, right? So we want them to already be doing at least 15K every month. If you're okay with 10K, completely fine. I mean, that's probably the window you want to stay anywhere between 10 and 15K. Just because at the very minimum, 10% of that is 1,500 and we are there to amplify them and help them buy back their time so we can ultimately make more money down the line, okay? Um, if you can go higher than that and you can get on an opportunity that's already doing 25, 30, 40 grand, I mean, it's going to be even better for you, right? But it's also going to give them a chance to get to know us as well and see if we can actually do the job because at the end of the day, that actually matters. Um, and we kind of want to be prepared in terms of what they will ask us on this call. Really, we aren't going to get anything super complex, uh, but they're going to ask us if we have any prior experience. And if not, don't panic, okay? We all are going to start somewhere and uh, you're not completely out of the picture, but you do want to make sure you preface as much research and practice you've done up until this point. You can say you've done a ton of mock DMs. You can even prepare mock DM conversations for them, for their particular offer, right? But if you go above and beyond and do all of this, you know, there, there's a possible chance that they're going to be able to look past the, the prior experience portion. And you can even reverse the risk and you can go as far as pitching a week trial if needed, right? But you can demonstrate that on the call and you can say, listen, John, I really love the offer and I love what you have going on completely up to you, but I'd be open to working for, you know, a, at least a week for free just to make sure you can actually see that I can do the work, right? But if you're super passionate and you have a ton of energy while saying that, it's going to be hard for somebody to not hire you because ultimately you are selling yourself. So I don't want you guys to show up on these calls and, you know, just kind of think you're going to answer some yes or no questions. Like that's not how it's going to roll. You have to show your interest, okay? They're probably going to ask you, why should I hire you? And that, again, is your chance to be personal and talk about what drives you. If you need to get like really in-depth as to what you have going on, obviously, don't sound desperate, but show them that you have a fire lit inside of you, right? Why are you here? What is the driving factor of yours that will not allow failure to be an option? How much are you expecting to be paid? And really, that's where you can uh, get creative. I mean, typically, the offers that I put my appointment setters in are usually going for a 10% commission on cash collected. So if somebody hops on a call that you booked in and they close for 3K in total, then we get $300 in commission there, right? And so what should we ask on this call? 
Well, we want to go over a couple of things, but this is how we're going to make sure that they're going to be a good client to appoint themselves for. What does your marketing look like at the moment? So, aka, how are you getting new leads, right? Are they running ads, content, um, whatever, right? That can, it doesn't matter. But we're preferably looking for more predictable traffic coming directly to us, like ads, like really good organic content, et cetera. And by really good organic content, I mean somebody who's potentially already kind of going viral, right? They have a couple, you know, 30, 40, 50,000 followers, right? But a ton of pool, like a big pool of, of us to pick prospects from, you can say. So they're already in the ecosystem. How much revenue are you generating each month with the business? Ideally, we want them to be making at least 10K every month. Like I mentioned in the last slide, that 10 to 15K a month uh, mark is a really good opportunity for us to go in there and start making some cash. If we manage to secure 10% of that, that's at very minimum $1,000. However, we're also here to amplify that. So like I mentioned, there's a ton of room for growth. And um, yeah, a perfect example, I had a fitness coach that I was working with where I plugged in a setter for him that I trained up. And uh, they were typically doing like 5K every single month, super unpredictable. But as soon as we plugged them in, they did 33K in 13 weeks. So the opportunity is definitely there for you to go in there and essentially help them transform their business. Okay. Uh, if they currently have an appointment center on another platform like Twitter or school, even on a community, um, you can ask how much they currently make each month. So they can say, you know, they'd probably mention they're making you know, 2,000, 4,000, whatever that number is, right? But it'll give you a good idea to make sure you have opportunity to come in and make similar amounts of money. And uh, ultimately, you can ask them, what is their vision for the company and business? How would you fit in helping them get to that outcome that they're trying to get to? Um, this is just a really good question to show that you're in it for the long run, right? And you can mention this when you're asking this. You can say, you know, I'm really looking to be a part of something that is not going to stop growing anytime soon um, because you are ultimately looking to develop your skills, but you're also looking to be a part of somebody else's entrepreneurial journey. And if they hear that, they're going to love that because, uh, yeah, we all want to make money, right? So congrats. You got the role. Now what? You don't even know how to appoint this head. <laughs> so but here are a couple of things that you're going to need, though. You're going to need access to their account right, and their credentials, so their username and their password. And chances are they might make you sign an NDA. Uh, completely fine, just sign it and don't do anything weird or scummy, right? Also, some people have their business account as their personal account as well. So we just want to make sure we kind of set clear boundaries on, you know, where do we send messages, where do we don't, etc. We want their booking link, so a Calendly link or their calendar, Google Calendar, whatever it is that they use to, to lock in prospects on a calendar for a sales call, essentially. And then we want to set up a way to get paid. So we could do, you know, PayPal. Uh, I personally did Stripe. And um, yeah, just go ahead and set that up. You can just search it up on YouTube. Very, very simple. And um, yeah, every time I collected payment, it was when the business owner collected cash. So we closed an $8,000 deal. I got $800 out of that. Okay. And I, yeah, sent the payment link to him that day and he would take care of it. So, um, and you can get access to their course content if they're open to it. Okay. And I do want to, you know, put this in there, you knowing the offer, like the back of your hand is kind of a secret weapon uh, for being an appointment setter. So, um, you know, maybe you can do with that information as you will. So how do we actually book in sales calls? Because you don't know how to do it up until this point, completely fine. Um, we just want to have an idea of it, but um, all we're trying to do is we want to take someone from an absolute stranger to a potential customer who's willing to pay, you know, a ton of money, right? Especially if we're in a high ticket space, which we should be. And here is the best structure to follow. It's really a one, two, three method. It starts with the intro. We move on to qualify. And then we ask the golden question, which is the pitch. Okay. So the intro, people like feeling like they're actually talking to other people. So the worst thing you can do here is to sound like a robot. Yeah, I always made it as hard as possible for someone to leave me on scene or read. So typically this would go something along the lines of, hey, John, thanks for the follow. Uh, we'll send it. And then the next message would say, what brings you to the page, by the way? Or you can say, John, how goes it, my man? Don't think we've ever spoken before, have we? And you always do want to make sure that whatever offer you're particularly on, that you actually sound like the business owner. So if your business owner says, bro, dude, uh, whatever, then do it. But if you're on a more sophisticated offer and you're targeting an older audience, then you probably want to refrain from saying, bruh, or dude, or whatever, right? So yeah, just want to be smart about that. And then, um, yeah, once we've gotten past the quick chit chat, 
it's time to pivot the conversation into the next stage, which is qualifying. Okay. And how do you actually pivot the conversation? You casually just want to bring up the next topic, right? How long have you been in the online biz space, by the way? Content looks like it's crushing it. Haha. <laughs> how long have you been working out, John? How are the dates coming along, dude? Right? So obviously you can tell like these are different offers, right? One of them is a business offer. The other one is a fitness offer and a dating coaching offer, right? And so, yeah, again, really treat all of this conversation as if you're talking to a buddy, right? But make sure you're being obviously, you're just, you're being respectful. You're not saying anything outlandish. Um, and so, yeah, really how we go, we start off with the intro. We say, hey, John, appreciate you following. Uh, you know, what brings you to the page? John will probably say, oh, I saw an ad that you were running and it spoke to me. Gotcha. What about the ad spoke to you, if you don't mind me asking? Boom. And you're already transitioning into the qualifying process, right? So once we're in the qualification stage, we don't want to book in bad sales calls onto our calendar because if we do, we're wasting our time by having the conversation. And even worse, we'll be wasting the closest time. So ultimately no money for anybody. This section of the conversation gives us a chance to see if they're going to be a good fit. And why do we want to book in people who are good fits? Because they have a higher likelihood of actually closing, meaning we can get commission and get paid from it. So we want to ask ourselves these questions. Do they have a problem that we can solve? Have they been struggling for X amount of time? Are they in a particular profession that signifies that they'll have enough money to buy from us? We want to ask every single question as casual as possible, okay? I want you guys to remember this last line right here. This isn't an interview, right? It's a casual conversation between you and a friend. So don't play 21 questions with them. If you keep sending questions over and over, when I first got started as an appointment setter, I literally had somebody ask me, what's with all the questions, man? Right, so it was a little bit weird and it got kind of awkward. At least I felt it did, um, but it was very obvious it was an appointment setter. And so, you know, obviously we live and we learn, but you're here to learn from my mistakes. So here are a couple of examples on how to casually do this. Yeah, totally feel that, John. I hear that all the time, so you're definitely not alone. How long has this been going on, by the way? Seems like you're pretty fed up with, with it at this point, am I right? So what I'm doing there, resonating with what he's doing. I am confirming that belief, and then I'm asking. So I'm not just asking, I'm acknowledging, and then I'm asking. Yeah, getting in the gym consistently in the beginning phases can be pretty tough if the right approach isn't being taken, huh? What do you do, by the way? Usually people's jobs is what brings the most friction to getting in the gym. So you see what I'm doing here is like, again, I'm acknowledging what he's saying, I'm agreeing, and then I'm also casually finding the approach to take in order to qualify whether he actually has a job or not, right? And chances are if they have, you know, an office job or something like that, then, um, you know, they probably have a decent amount to be able to afford like a $3,000 program or, or whatever, right? We can get specific with what they do. They'll probably open up about that, but they'll open up about it when we casually ask rather than kind of like pester them a little bit, right? Um, yeah, because I don't know about you guys, but if somebody was asking me questions like that, I'd probably refrain from answering or even opening up about my situation. And then lastly, the golden question, the pitch. I tell my first class setter students this all the time. You need ammo to win the war. Okay, so once you've got ammo, ask the golden question and shoot. John, hate to be forward, but can easily help you lose that 20 pounds that's keeping you from playing with your grandkids. One of my previous clients, Nick, went through the exact same thing, but once we created a meal plan that was catered towards his liking, it was game over. No doubt we'd be able to do the same for you. You over a chat sometime this week, I can drop my calendar for you and you can pick a spot that'll work best for you. So this is a little bit of a big one, but it is important at why we do this once we have enough ammunition. So before we get into the pitch, I'll go back to the qualifying process. The qualifying process should be able to highlight everything about an ideal avatar. So if you're working an account that helps men lose 20 pounds in 90 days without having to follow a restriction and, uh, you know, the age group you're after is 40 years old then you want to make sure that they're 40 years old or they're at least in that age range that they've tried diets before and they don't want to follow that anymore. Um, what else they have, you know, a career, maybe like, you know, maybe we're after like blue collar workers in particular, whatever the offer is and whatever it looks like for you, you want to make sure you have every single thing checked off before you make that pitch and your pitch can be strong. So I'll, I'll break down why this pitch here is strong. 
Um, and obviously, we're talking about John here, who opened up to us about wanting to lose weight because he wants to really be involved with his grandkids. And that is ammunition, my friends. If somebody opens up to us inside of a DM conversation and tells us, hey, look, I'm really tired of being where I'm at because it's holding me back from enjoying what's most important to me, then I will use that in my pitch. Or if somebody tells me like, yeah, I have a wedding coming up that I have to get ready for and I really want to lose 20 pounds so I can look the best because I'm, I'm the um, whatever, whatever they call it. I'm the bridesmaid or whatever, right? Then you can use that in your pitch and you can say, you know, John or Sarah, whoever it is, hates me for it, but we can easily help you lose that 20 pounds to make sure you're nice and ready for that wedding coming up in the summer. But it's ammunition, right? And if people read that, they not only have a bigger reason and a real motivation to actually book in with you, it's no longer like, oh, let me just, you know, go buy his thing, right? He's he's not selling me anymore. He actually cares and listened to what I was going through. So like I mentioned, make sure you check off the qualifying factors for that perfect avatar, make sure you have ammunition and then go for the pitch. And it should be very, very casual as well. A couple of other things to note here. I'm using uh, language that shows that I'm very convicted in what I do. And that's going to be something you have to do as an appointment setter, right? You have to make sure you can tell them, oh, we can easily help you lose the 20 pounds rather than saying like, yeah, we should be able to help you lose the 20 pounds. You know, it's not really convincing. So you need to have uh, the conviction that the business owner would have if he was on a sales call, okay? And so they're probably going to say, yeah, let's do it. And what we want to do on our end, we'll say, sweet, I'll be on my computer for another five, so lock it in and I'll make sure I confirm it for you over on my end. Really what we're doing there is we're adding some urgency uh, so that way they don't just ghost us because that will happen. And if they do, they ghost you, let a day go by, you're going to follow up with them. You can hit them with a question mark. You can like their most recent message. You can unsend, uh, you know, you can copy your last message, unsend it, and then send it again. There's a couple of really creative things that you can do to make sure, you know, you're kind of being a little annoying, but not too annoying to the point where they block us, right? And yeah, once they do book in, we want to make sure, cool, we say we confirm it for them and we want to warm them up. So if you're partnered with a business owner that is not an idiot, they will have content out assets out there, okay, sales assets, meaning client interviews, client testimonials, VSLs, um, just videos speaking to, to certain limiting beliefs that their audience might have that will be perfect for you to send them so that way they no longer show up to the sales calls with those beliefs and they buy, right? That's something that I did more than you guys can know as an appointment setter. And to be honest, I think that's what made me um, earn as much as I was able to earn as an appointment setter. And um, yeah, here's a real conversation I had in the DMs that led to $800 in commission. So I was working an $8,000 offer and um, yeah, here's 10% of that. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of just walk you guys through what this looks like. But we're going to start on the left hand side here, the very first one. Uh, really what I said was, yo, got a question for you, brother. And this intro uh, worked like a charm various times, but I also do want to make sure I preface that you do want to be a little bit creative with how you approach, right? So switch it up. You can literally say like, yo, dude, what's up, right? And especially if your business owner talks like that, or you can say, um, John, what's up? I appreciate the follow. Like, what well, curious as to what made you follow, right? You can do that as well. Really, I would take the more casual approach and you'll see like in my language here, um, he said, he said, ask away. So I got him to answer. I just said, double checking if we've ever chatted before. You look familiar, but wasn't too sure. Don't think so. No doubt. No doubt was a line that my guy always used. I was wondering, so figured I'd double check. Haha, <laughs> my bad. Well, bro, dope to me nonetheless. He would say dope. Dope to me. He would say it all the time. Um, You're good, bro. Keep crushing it. Seems like you have a cool system going. So he's obviously aware of the content. He actually came in through an ad. And um, yeah, so I really just answered and said, thanks. Yeah, it's absolutely crushing it for me and my clients. I kind of gave a little bit of like a like a hint here, like, oh, yeah, we're crushing it. Even, you know, me and myself, I'm crushing it. And here is the is the pivoting transition as to where I start to go into the qualifying process. So you can literally see how brief the intro is. And your intro can vary, right? You, you It can be a little bit longer. It can be very, very short. Um, but that is the pivoting point. I said, you got to biz yourself, eh? My guy was Canadian, so I used A all the time. He said, good, good stuff, man. Love that for you. And yes, cool. I said, sweet. What's the offer looking like? He said, I help online businesses that are making 50K a month scale with automated systems in less than 16 weeks. 
cool so you can guys see like that offer i was kind of talking to you guys about there's you know certain thing that they help uh, other people with right and in this case it's automated systems less than 16 weeks etc i said oh sweet man that a coaching offer or a done for you type of offer now the reason i asked this question is because we did particularly work with coaches but we did have some agency clients as well that we can help and i got i want you guys to realize there even with that question i am qualifying right so i am like trying to make it clear as to what kind of offer are you running and so i hope it's clear that yeah I'm, I'm qualifying him and i'm making sure he's our ideal client so i want you guys to picture i have a sheet of paper and i have a couple of check boxes that i have to check off and you know it can be coaching business or coaching slash agency business whatever right and so i checked that one off with that question he says it's a mix of both a software as a service and everything i said oh dang that's the beauty of it though eh a bit of everything here's a really good example as well of me being casual and kind of joking around a little bit too um but he was kind of responding uh pretty frequently so i figured you know it's it's cool i, I don't have to like always ask a qualifying question um but sometimes that's needed to move the needle forward right in the conversation he says sounds like it but it, it truly is one offer only here's like the website and i did not open the website but i think i did I, and i looked at it briefly but i said dude that website is sick so again i'm acknowledging and then i'm asking it I'm asking the question and I say, crushing it with this offer, bro. And really what that lets me do within the conversation is figure out if he's actually making money or not, right? So obviously our you know indicator and what our offer looked like is we helped people who were stuck anywhere between five to 15K a month. And so me asking that question will allow him to answer without me being super direct, right? It wouldn't have flown this easily, uh, if I said, oh, are you doing 10K a month or are you doing 50K a month? Right? Like, it's just weird. He says, I appreciate you, bro. Just launched ads and so far so good. One of our mechanisms for this offer was ads, like figuring out this insane ad system that people really didn't know about at the time. Now everybody's freaking running it, but we were essentially like the founders of that system. Um, and I said, let me know if I can help you out there, bro. Clients are crushing it with a, with a dirty funnel we got going on. Uh, he said, likewise, man, what type of funnel are you running? And so this is kind of where I'm opening up about like what the actual mechanism looks like. Um, and you'll see, you know, I get like a really good response here. I say follower type of ad funnel here on IG. All the sales assets are what, make, are what makes the difference. The reason I say that is because I don't want them to think it's super easy to figure out. I want them to feel like they like we know something that they don't, which we did at the time. Right. And you'll kind of see it in the conversation here. I said, what kind of return on ad spend are you seeing right now with the one with the ad you're running right now, dude? He says, I hear you. None yet. Just launched this ad to a VSL type of training. I said, oh, gotcha. Yeah. Could take a little longer with VSL type of funnels, but pretty good nonetheless, brother. Is the VSL a, long, a longer one? He says, yeah, man, specifically call funnels. VSL is like 35 minutes. I need to try and make one that's 10 to 12 minutes. I said, yeah, I think. I think that's why I've steered away from funnels like so, to be honest. I use VSLs, but they're like ninjas disguised in plain sight. So I made a joke there, but what I actually did, funny enough, is I created a little bit of an enemy, a little bit of an enemy towards what he's currently doing. I, I'm sub, subminimally telling him what he's doing is not going to work. And um, you'll see, I mean, yeah, you can pretty much see uh, his interest later on in the conversation that gauges that. He says, I hear you. I'm still testing a lot at the moment. And yeah, I was just seeing what you did. Solid work, specifically on the client success side. Mind if I ask you a couple of questions? And so already he's gauging the interest and I was already licking my lips, right? I said, yeah, bro, shoot. Yeah, dude, so right now, uh, do you currently opt for VSLs or what type of funnels are you vouching for, say for a marketing agency? And I told him uh, the type of ad that we're running and we're teaching. I said, it has to be a follower ad, bro. To be honest, I've found VSLs to be a little outdated in terms of being able to convert really well. Other type of funnel just compounds so well. So you see, I'm throwing the rocks. I'm creating an enemy towards what he's doing right now. And I, I know he's probably thinking on the other side, damn, I don't know if I just turned on the correct ad, right? And I said, is a VSL treating you well so far or you, are you still looking for a return there? He says, what do you mean follower ad? So this is even better. This is a little bit of like a newer opportunity for him. And if you guys know anything about marketing, uh, people like to buy into something new, not something that's just an improvement of what they already know. So um, I said, it's a particular, a particular type of funnel that attracts the most insane qualified clients. So I'm like really hyping it up. 
a bit of a newer type of an ad, to be honest. Again, the new opportunity. Never heard of it. Perfect. I thought it was like boosting posts with a message goal. I said, nah, similar, but not quite the same. How's the VSL opt-in you're running doing so far, dude? So again, I'm trying to like see how he's doing and I'm like kind of disguising it between like my answers. And so I finally get him to answer. He says, ha, I hear you. Testing the variables as are performing well, actually 2% click through rate. And I'm pretty sure that's like horrible. So I don't know. I, I guess it was like a little lost or whatever. And yeah, I said, gotcha. Yeah, man, let me know. Would be more than happy to walk you through what the other funnel looks like. Can you show you a couple of vids that explain the process as well, man? Sounds good, dude. Would love, for, would love that. This is a perfect example of me using sales assets to my advantage. So luckily I was on an offer that, you know, I had a really good like uh, business owner and marketer, you can say, who understood this very, very well. And uh, I sent those over and this particular video is meant to sell them, right? It's not meant for me to uh, kind of carry all the, the heavy lifting, right? And so <clears throat> I followed up with him a couple days later, said, yo, what's up, man? What'd you think of the bits? Haven't watched yet. Caught up with a bunch of stuff. No rush, dude. Haha, <laughs> keep crushing it. Uh, and then he just responded a little bit later. You can see on the day, it was like uh, a couple of hours later. He said, have you had success with similar com companies in my industry? Uh, if you haven't seen, uh, I help online business scales to done for you systems. He just explains it again. And really guys, what I also do want to preface here is like the power of a follow-up. You saw, I did not lose track of the conversation. And so I came back and I made sure he saw that video because I know how well it would sell him. So, oh yeah, tons of killers inside of the community that have more of a done for you service rather than a done with you. I actually used to run a lead gen agency for mortgage brokers back in the day, back in the day myself. This is a perfect example of me knowing my business owner like the back of my hand because I can use stories like that to leverage in conversations and almost resonate with what he's saying, right? He's not the only one who's ran an agency. We've done it too before, okay? Um, and then I said, to be honest, same, uh, same principles apply. And he's like, cool. I want to do a discovery call, show you what I got going on and see if you can help the biz. Now, there is no doubt in my mind that the reason he decided to pitch us for a call um, is to see if we can help him is because of the sales assets, the, the videos that were meant to sell him, this particular one on the right-hand side. So I pretty much went ahead and uh, pitched. I mean, I didn't really have to pitch him. Um, I just did some little bit of a scarcity uh, with the price raise, which we actually were doing. And then we were also donating to a really good foundation. Um, yeah, so I pretty much added that urgency at the end, just in terms of, you know, we'll be at my desk for another five. So lock it in and I'll make sure to confirm it for you over on my end. That's it. You see, guys, the conversation was not long at all. I mean, we just started here. This made me $800. And you can imagine how much you can make if you just completely repeat it over and over and over again. So I hope you all enjoyed that little breakdown. And uh, like I mentioned, this is really all you need to go and get started with appointment setting, guys. The only difference is going to be whether you want to become uncomfortable with doing things that is not you by nature, right? By doing hard things, by challenging yourself and, uh, you know, outreaching to people and sending video DMs and then ultimately, you know, getting on an interview. Chances are you might not crush your first interview, but you have to put in the reps. And this is how people get into the space. They do the things that other people don't want to do. I hope to see you guys on the other side with appointment setting. Let me know what you guys thought down below. Make sure you guys leave a like, comment, send me a message over on Instagram if you have any questions. And uh, yeah, I'll see you all in the next one.